to do this. And in fact, I, I should, uh, pardon me as I just copy some files, uh, start some files copying off of this guy. My, my uh, audio recorder is full um, as well. Uh, so I, I've been talking. Um, okay, uh, so um, uh, the question was, um, what is the semantics of, of rates? Um, associated with, uh, with transitions. You recall the transitions as we've been using them have, um, uh, can be associated with uh, five or so different types of, of um, semantics of transitions. Um, specifically, they can be associated with transitions based on rates, which is something we'll talk about now. It can be based on transitions associated with uh, triggering by, uh, m by messages. It could be traced on transitions according, uh, associated with um, uh, fixed timeout, transitions associated with arrival, and transitions associated with, uh, with um, conditions. Okay? And the question was brought, what is the meaning of a rate transition? Um, it's, I believe, the, the default. It's the first of them. Um, and. Uh, Specifically, um, we'll, we'll go and look at it uh, here. Um, uh, we, we have something along, along these lines. Um, right, um, so a rate of 0.01, okay? And, and I kind of waved my hands about it and said that uh, a rate of 0.01 implies a mean time of residence of, of 100 time units. Um, and uh, I kind of left it at that. And it seems that there's some substantial questions about this. So I'd like to talk about what this rate means in more detail. And I hope that I'll answer the questions about it. So um, some may have seen fixed rates before in the form of transition rates in compartment models, OK? Um, uh, in compartment models, we commonly have a, a fixed rate of, of transition from uh, stock A to stock B. Um, and uh, within this context, the flow out of a stock was commonly set by multiplication of the contents of that stock, the number of people in stock A, times some rate of transition. And um, uh, this might be uh, very common. by the stock of susceptible people or what have you. Um, we use different names for these rates. Transition rates, likelihood of transition per unit time, and transition hazard. Um, the idea is conditional on you being in that stock. You have a certain chance per unit time of, of transitioning to another, to another stock, OK? Because it's a likelihood unit time, if it were just likely by itself, it would be between zero. Because it's a likelihood per unit time, it can be greater than one. Okay, it can be arbitrarily large, uh, although it's bounded below by zero. Um, so, so for example, um, if we had an SIR model and we had a transition uh, in a in a compartmental model from from um, S to some recovered state labeled here T for. Um, we might have a recovery delay, and um, the reciprocal of that recovery delay will be a rate multiplied by i for them to transition from i to t. Similarly, the mean immunity last delay and um, the, the formula associated with newly susceptible, um, that is the, the number of people per unit time that, that have the waning immunity is t over the immunity loss delay. In other words, t would be multiplied times 1 over the immunity loss delay. Here's another fixed transition in a compartmental context, annual risk of death or mortality hazard. And the formula here would be x times alpha, right? Um, now, uh, once again, this is uh, 1 over mean time till death in, in that, in that um, state, OK? Um, so let's, let's talk about this. Um, when we have fixed rates in any lodge, I've said those things to remind you, but suppose we have a fixed rate in any logic, a rate of 0.01. What does that really mean? Well, it's completely comparable to the things we just saw within a compartmental context, okay? So 
a, a rate of, of 0.01, you have a residence time, a mean residence time of 10, okay? We're specifying rates of transition, we're specifying a transition hazard. Now, because we're dealing with the chance that each individual uh, transitions, we don't have to multiply times the number of persons at risk. This is an individual's chance of transitioning. It's within, there's just one person at risk, okay? So um, uh, there's a certain chance unit time that they'll, um, that they'll uh, leave, okay? Um, so, so let's suppose we have this 0.01 um, rate. Uh, let's now talk about, about the, the mathematics of this a, a bit. Okay, um, so um, pardon me if I, if I erase this. Um, okay, so if we have uh, a, a transition out here um, associated with transition, um, and this is a, a rate of, of 0 0.1. Um, we can think of that, um, this is a memoryless process. A given person, conditional and uh, is undergoes this certain chance of leaving per unit time, say per day, uh, regardless of how long they've been here. Um, at a mathematical level, um, if, if this is the only transition out, the, the probability of the state dec it decreases like this. Um, so forgive me for um, uh, for for using a bit of calculus for those uh, for whom this isn't a daily occurrence, but uh, uh, we write p dot or dp dt equals 0 0.01 times p, okay? Um, excuse me, minus. Um, so, so the likelihood of remaining in here, if, if you have a certain probability of, of remaining, uh, remaining here in the first place, your probability of remaining here after a small interval dt um, is just, um, it, it goes down by 0.01 times the probability of remaining here. And this leads to a, this leads to the probability being e to the minus 0 0.01 times t, okay? Um, so your probability, if, it, if you've started in that stock, the probability that you'll still remain there after one time unit is, is this, the probability after two time units is 0 point minus 0, e to the minus 0 point, et cetera. And so this decreases exponentially. The residence time is exponentially distributed um, according to this, uh, this formula right here. Um, your mean time there, and, and I have slides which uh, derive this for a, for a different class, your mean, uh, it turns out, is 1 over 0 0.01, which is here uh, a mean time of 100. And that can be demonstrated by um, integrating up uh, t times p of t um, dt. It's just taking, this is the probability that you remain for time t and multiplying it times t to get the expected value. This is, yes, the probability of remaining in there at that time. And you have to go, have to go through one more manipulation. And you'll integrate it up and, um, and you'll get a, a mean time of, of, uh, of residence in that. And it turns out to be this value. So in short, your chance of leaving here is independent of how long you've been here. Now, this is the probability of remaining in that state after time t. And um, you, uh, you know, given that you remain in there, you, but um, your chance of still remaining there gets smaller and smaller um, over over time, for sure. And uh, its highest, um, you know, uh, highest obviously uh, early on. So. Um, that's a little bit um, of the comments on the meaning there. So as long as you're still in there, you have this, this fixed chance of leaving per unit time. So what would it mean if, if I have a rate here instead of, let's say, 5? What would that mean? Well, it's a mean time of being there 1 over 5. Um, and so after one time unit, um, this uh, this is going to be here. Um, uh, you can this is going to be decreasing as p of t equals e to the minus five times t. Okay, um, time unit is going to be e to the minus five, um, which is one over e to the e to the fifth, um, and uh, e is somewhere between two and three. 
if this were uh, 2, it would be 1 over 32, or about 3%. Um, if it were uh, 3, I should know what that is. Um, what would be uh, 81 times uh, times 9, so something like uh, uh, 729, uh, 1 over 729, so uh, a little bit more than 1 over 1,000. So this is a very, very small um, probability that you remain there after one time, okay? Um, so that's what that rate represents. Um, and um, it's one of the reasons why you'll often see that rate written as, say, 1 over 7.0 if your, if your uh, average time there is, um, is, is 7, say, days, if your average time in that state. Um, but does that answer the questions about that, the meaning of this thing? So once they move on to the next state, so if you had an arrow coming out of the bottom box? Yeah. Uh, in other words, if, if you had an arrow that. coming out of here. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, the agent that moved from the top to the bottom box yeah. in that time interval yeah. could also move oh, yeah. based on the probability of the out arrow. Of this one. Yeah. Right, out of that second box. And that could happen within a calendar day. Say your unit oh, oh totally. It could happen in less That's than a calendar That's really been confusing me for a long time. Is oh, that okay. I thought it was very sequential that every agent had to make a decision yeah. in that box. And if it moved into the next box, no other decisions were made Oh. until the next day. But oh, no, no. Yeah, no, that's no. right. That's it, 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 that's again, the events are occurring as quick as they need to. And this is going to lead to, if this were five, this would lead to a flurry, uh, a flurry of you know, if there were one person here, it would lead to one event. But, right, right. you know, with many people across the model, it's going to lead to people quickly leaving this. And then they could leave here soon. In fact, this could, this this time here, the timeout could be zero. It, you can actually instantly leave this, instantaneously leave the box. And all that happens is that event gets handled. It says, oh, they got into here. Oh, there's a transition out in zero time. I'll just enqueue another transition for the same time. And it gets, it gets handled, uh, you know, maybe there's some other events in queue for that same time, and that one gets handled eventually, but before time advances. And, it, and, then, and then they proceed to another thing, but it doesn't have to wait for a day. Well, essentially, that, that's right, because that person's clock for the next decision resets. Exactly. Okay, yeah. that, was, that was conceptually very difficult for me. Yeah, think. yeah. But uh, here's the bigger question. Yeah. So you've got these multiple decisions by an agent that can be made in a 24-hour period. How do you accumulate that if you want to think in terms of nominal time? Like, well, how can I get a count that so many people are infected mm -hmm. if they've already made the decision within that 24-hour period to be recovered, or if it's already been determined that they're recovered? Where would I, do they go in the infected box for the count of the 24-hour period, or do they go in the recovered? So, so there's no residence time. Um, so, so the choice of the time, I don't know if this is going to answer your question, but you can tell me. The choice of the time unit does not in any way impose a, um, a re has, it does not have residence time assumptions. So you could have a time unit of seconds, you get a time unit of weeks, and, and it doesn't in any way change the, um, the uh, behavior of sort of how long people stay in stocks. Um, but, uh, I think maybe what you're asking is, let me put it, let me put it another way, see if I, if I understand your question. Maybe your question is, look, if people are changing states so quickly, they can, they can kind of jump between states with flitting abandon. Mm -hmm. um, how is it that, how is it that you can reliably count, like report the number at a given time, and expect to have a sense of sort of anything near a complete accounting for things, like maybe, Maybe we count at time zero and time one, but maybe and maybe you know time zero, three people are infected. At, at time one, four people are infected. But between it, there are twenty people infected. Is, is that kind of what you're? Yeah, right, right. Okay. Um. So the same issue comes up with a with a um deterministic model. I'm not a system model. You have some of the same issues. Um. There though, you could. It's true. You could report on every time step if yeah. you wanted to. Um. Uh. Now, um, what, um, what what you certainly could do is is to um, every time someone transitions to that state, 
you could record, you know, the size of that state or something, or you could record the max. Check if it's the maximum value. Thus, well, it's sort of depends on. Sorry. Well, I think of it as binning. Yeah, I 
I mean, uh, yeah, that's, I know that's Jeff, fundamentally what was causing the problem. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, generally, what's going to happen is you're going to come in, go by. Okay. So, so, th so this event. So you come into the state. Let's suppose this is the only out transit. It actually pre-schedules when this is. It draws from an exponential. It draws from one of these. Draws from an exponential. Schedules this, and and actually you can get a report of when that will occur. And it comes in here, and then and then um, at that time it instantly transitions here. So it appears here, and and then it tries to to calculate when it's going to leave via these other things. And some of them it doesn't know, like a message. You know. It's, it, it could occur at any time. But typically, it's going to be in the state for some amount of time. It's possible you could have an instantaneous transition. Um, uh, and you could go on to another state and another state, all in that same time. Right. And then until you end up in something where there's not an instantaneous transition out. you know. But generally speaking, when you come into a state, you're going to spend some amount of time there. And you're going to get a rest there. And you'll be from there from then on. Within a time interval for yep. an agent. Yeah. If they transition, yeah. the, the time interval starts again for that agent so they can transition out of where they just moved into. Th that, that's that's that was the key to th me. Th th that's true. And so they may be, that's absolutely right. Okay. And so they may be in this, you know, they handle an event. So they come into here at, at call it relative time zero. And, and then they leave maybe at this time. And then they come into here. And then they leave this state at this time. And and it sort of, um, you know, when they when they come in here, it sort of figures out when they're going to leave, and it and it tries to pre-schedule that. But bear in mind that event may get canceled because they may end up leaving because of a message on another right, thing, right, right. and um, on another transition. And the point um, a point here is, let's suppose that we had a reporting event, a, a, a sort of global event went off, you know, um, somewhere up here that reports every time unit, and we reported. Sort of at this time, we uh, cycle through the population. Would say, "What state are you in? What state are you in? What state are you in? What state are you in?" We go through each of those people in the population, right. and use those statistics, and we write it to our database. It will it, you know, ask, "What state are you in?" And say, "Oh, I'm in this state," yeah. and and that's all fine and good. Right. But what confused me is when I was looking at, at some of my output, I saw that some of the agents had moved three states down. Right? Oh yeah. And, yeah, and I was like, I thought everything had to happen sequentially. No. Before they no, and it, and it doesn't have to happen, you know, like one day apart because the time unit is a day, right, not at all. Right, it's happening within the day. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. the clock resets and it can be within yeah. the next time. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, people oh. could live and die. Empires could be built and crumbled within the span of one time unit. One time unit. The statue of Ozymandias could be built up and crumble in the deserts of Babylon. Um, okay. <laughs> Jeff, did, you, did you have something to say? Yeah, no, Perhaps from Shelley as well? Um, Yes. No, no, I don't think there's a disagreement here uh, about it. I, 
I, I, I want to riff off of something Jeff just said, though, because I, I think, once again, um, he's hit on an absolutely critical point, and, and one um, about which uh, I've been remiss. Um, so, so, so let's look at this exponential distribution, which is indeed the, it's not just the, the typical, it's almost the enforced distribution in an aggregate model. Because with a first order delay in an aggregate model, um, when you have something like this and you have some, you know, mean time, mean time, um, you know, um, in CKD stage two or something like that, and 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 you know, this is the number of people and you know, CKD stage two, and this is the mean time. Call it call it mu and this is you know c2 over mu the, the the rate of flow you're assuming that the time in here is exponentially distributed this is in a compartmental model again it makes the well mixed assumption that that um, the people within the stock are interchangeable that they are um, that, that they are not distinguished in any way by their, the time that came in, et cetera. So each person in here has a certain chance per unit time of one over mu of, of going from here to here. And, and what that leads to, the uncomfortable truth, is that that leads to this exponential resonance time assumption where um, the greatest chance of, 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 of leaving, the, the chance is much higher that you'll leave um, uh, within the first, uh, say, uh, day, then in the, the second day, in absolute terms. Now, conditional on you still being here, your chance is equal for each successive day you're leaving. But in absolute terms, there's a higher chance you will have left during the first day than the second day, the third day. In other words, there's a very high chance it could be close to zero that you're saying. And what Jeff is saying is that, um, and, and I think, John, you're agreeing with it, that, that um, you know, often, this is just an impoverished um, representation because typically we know so that there's actually a distribution with some, with at least some bounds between it on, on sort of um, you know how far it goes and, and the chance that you could be near zero is is, uh, is almost infinitesimal from a real world data perspective and yet it's it's almost privileged in, from the standpoint of the exponential distribution. It's it, you know, a lot of people leave, would leave during this first sort of time unit compared to during the, the second time unit, compared to during this sort of third time unit. Um, so, so this is, I mean, it would be overstating to say it's, the, it's sort of the emperor without clothes, but it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty impoverished. And stringing together multiples of them is, is changing now the structure of your model in a kind of slavish way to capture the properties of a probability distribution in a, in a kind of odd, um, uh, you know, odd obsequience. Um, and uh, it would be best better if we could capture this timeout. Now, this is where the, the, the chickens come home to roost. Um, I'm sure I've got a lot of different, uh, different metaphors here today, and I apologize. But um, how would we, ladies and gentlemen, if we wanted to capture the, the fact that the residence time within a state, within a, trans, within a, within a, a, a state in a state chart, is distributed according to some, to some probability distribution. Maybe, maybe it's a triangular distribution. Maybe it's a um, truncated normal. Maybe it's, maybe it's um, uh, some sort of truncated beta or what have you. But, um, uh, if we wanted to capture that it was drawn from a probability distribution, um, uh, let, let's say a triangular, how would we do that within any logic? How would we make their, their, um, the time that they spend here be, be, be randomly selected but drawn from a probability distribution? Where, how would we do it just mechanically in the any logic interface? Okay, and so so if I were here, um, uh, what would what would I use? What would I use here? If I wanted to have them be drawn from a probability distribution, would I? A rate will lead to this sort of 
emperor's new, the emperor has no clothes sort of situation. Well, that, again, that's too strong, but what would I use? Which of these choices? You'd use a timeout where it's not fixed, but it's drawn from a distribution. So you'd have like a triangular distribution with a, um, a minimum and uh, a maximum, right? Um, something like that. And so you might have it between three days and six days, or you know, say, say one and three days as the uh, incubation time for flu or something like that. And, and you don't have to worry that you've implicitly assumed that people, that there's a lot of people who are gonna have almost no, no time. You can choose your distribution at your leisure. You could even choose an exponential, which would lead to this, but you have a lot more flexibility. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is non-trivial. Um, but let me ask this. I mean, um, so, so we see here a timeout with, with, with um, a draw from this distribution, but, but what does that, that really mean? Um, uh, does that mean it's going to be running this ongoing, ongoing basis over time? What does this mean? Does, does it mean that this is always going to be the timeout? Like, whenever anyone in the population is going to use the same timeout here? No, it's going to, each time someone enters in here, it's going to say, it's time to figure out how long they're going to be in the state. Let's draw it from this distribution. So even if that same person, well, if, if we had waiting community and they came back in here, it, the next time they might have a, a different timeout, and the next time a different timeout, et cetera. You know, if, if you wanted people to differ heterogeneously with regards to how long it takes them to recover, you could have a, a separate parameter or variable that computes that and then uses that as their characteristic time up. But the point is, this is kind of um, uh, using, imposing a, a, a distribution, an explicitly chosen distribution for this that at least has some defensibility behind it. This distribution, which lies implicit within um, compartmental models, um, in, including many esteemed system dynamics models, um, including some by the instructor, um, it, 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 it has this somewhat, somewhat awkward, um, somewhat, um, somewhat embarrassing sort of uh, assumption behind it about the, the nature of that transition. Um, was, that, was that a worthy um, set of uh, discussions? Okay. 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 I'm 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 glad it's uh, glad it's useful, and um, I I regret the opportunity costs attendant upon these things. Um, but. Um,